come to White Sands Missile Range to see for myself what an EMP attack might actually do. This device creates the same electromagnetic pulse that's given off by a nuclear blast. The pulse doesn't affect people, only electronics. But just to be on the safe side, Russ and I retreat to a safe distance. This remote control helicopter is about to fly through an electric discharge of close to a million volts. And yet the most sinister thing about it is there's no flash, no bang. There you go. There you go. Excellent work. Excellent work. In an instant, the helicopter circuitry is completely fried. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. One second you're in the air, next second you're on the ground. Not a good way to go through the day, especially if you're in an airplane. Let's go take a look at it. Flying along just like that. He's doing a great job. Next thing you know, just one little click, click, and boom. Right out of the sky. For the ultimate test, I'm going to put myself right into the line of fire by driving a vehicle through the pulse. The fuel tank has been specially prepared using pressurized nitrogen to prevent an explosion. Even so, this isn't exactly standard procedure. They've assured me that uh, when the pulse radiates that uh, the car will not explode. So I'd like to say to my family, I love you. And to the camera guys and uh, the cameras, they have to leave because they can't stay around for the shot. So let's see what happens. Ah! Here we go. Five. Four. Get a little momentum. Three. Two. One. I'm still alive. Uh, the car isn't. The car is officially dead. I heard the click of the switch. The pulse came through. Uh, fried out the uh, electronics. Uh, as far as the uh, starter switch, but there's still battery power. That's why the windows still work. They run basically very simply. You've got some lights on the dash, but when you try to go to the ignition, nothing really there. It just dies. So an EM pulse from this facility can take out electronics from within a 50-foot radius. But what would be the extent of an actual E-bomb attack? If a nuclear event is set off at the right distance above the ground, it can take out an entire area. So we're not talking about uh, New Mexico. We're talking about the United States. The kind of nuclear device that could do that sort of damage is designed to produce very little heat or blast. Instead, it creates a huge pulse of radio waves which sweep through long cables, frying delicate components forever. What do you think would happen in the first 24 hours of an attack? Uh, the word that comes to mind is chaos. And Fred Levian ought to know. A retired naval commander, he is now one of the world's leading authorities on directed energy weapons. As an advisor to Congress, he has sworn to secrecy on much of this information. But even he doesn't know who might possess this kind of device. Well, the Russians have been known to have uh, built some uh, directed energy weapons, microwave weapons, that are the size of a beer can. Yeah, and they're portable, and we don't know how many have been let loose. The Russians have had a terrible time keeping track of their nuclear weapons and directed energy weapons. So uh, we're not sure whether some of them have been stolen or whether they've been sold. So it's very difficult to, uh, to have a, a accurate picture of what's available. What would you have to do to be able to build a system like that? Uh, have brains and money. Really? Yeah, it's as simple as that. Brains and money are no object to the terrorist. And 9-11 showed just how far they're prepared to go. How would a terrorist use an uh, E-bomb or an E-impulse? For example, he could do it around an airport. 
and wipe out all the equipment that the airport used to keep planes in the air and guided, then you've got these thousands of airplanes in the air, uh, which are essentially flying blind. They don't know where they're located anymore. They don't know where to land. Uh, they might fly until they run out of fuel and crash. Um, that would be probably one of the most immediate catastrophes. to the New York Stock Exchange and detonate it there and wipe out trillions of dollars in people's money by shutting down the New York Stock Exchange. Traveling at the speed of light, an EMP attack would strike everything directly in its line of sight. The higher the altitude, the greater the devastation. At 30 miles above the United States, the device would affect up to half a dozen states. But at 300 miles, the whole continent of North America would be brought to an irreversible standstill. That signal would cover most of the country and essentially shut down the United States as far as communications go. How long would it take us to recover? Uh, I, I could think it could be months, and in some cases, perhaps years, for us to recover from that. How do you protect yourself against something like that? That's a good question, and it's probably the toughest one to answer because although it might not be expensive to protect one system, you don't know which system a terrorist might hit. So it can run into extraordinary amounts of money to protect everything. How severe is this threat? How actual is this threat? <sighs> Unfortunately, I, on a scale of 10, I'd give it an 8. But with people who have no regard, not only for us, but for human life, uh, they'll do anything they can, and that, that's, that's the big fear, I think. Next, I uncover the lasers that the military want to keep a secret. An energy like that is going to cause an awful lot of damage to a person. 